It's time to ditch those store-bought leaders and catch more fish. I'm gonna teach you how to improve your bite rate and catch rate simply by teaching you how to tie a proper tapered leader. down. So store-bought leaders are not very good. They're typically made of monofilament line and oftentimes they snap very easily. I'm gonna teach you guys how to tie your own leaders according to the scenario and species you're after. My choice of fluorocarbon is Cortland, but you could pretty much get away with any premium fluorocarbon leader. And I say leader because fluorocarbon leader is not the same thing as fluorocarbon line. Fluorocarbon leader is made to disappear underwater and improve your bite rate. How sick was that? How sick was that? When I say bite rate, I mean fish choosing to eat your fly instead of denying it because they can see your leader. Oh, got it, you got it. Nice, Eric. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. So a fly fishing leader consists of several sections. You got your butt section, your mid section, your shock tippet or bite tippet. So let's break that down. Typically for the butt section, you wanna match the diameter of your butt section to the core of your fly line. So if I'm throwing anything eight weight or under, I use a 30 pound butt section. If I'm fishing a nine weight, I'll go with a 40 pound butt section. I'm gonna run through these knots pretty quickly right now for this video. If you're not familiar with these knots, I will link videos in the description showing specifically how to tie these knots. Ooh. Oh, that was a bird dive and I'm like, wow, that's a freaking suck. That is a tank. So most fly lines these days come with a welded loop on the end. And if it doesn't, or if it breaks off, I create my own. Traditionally, leaders were attached to your fly line using a nail knot. I'll actually create a loop on the fly line and then I'll stack three nail knots to hold it together because three nail knots are stronger than one. The reason why I like a loop to loop connection, you don't, every time you're gonna tie a new leader on, you're not eating away at your fly line. I mostly fish a five weight these days. When I'm fishing around town for tarpon, peacock bass, I like to go with a nine foot leader and how I get there is I go with a wingspan of 30 pound fluorocarbon and half a wingspan of 25 pound fluorocarbon. I attach that to the fly line with a perfection loop. So to tie a perfection loop, essentially you just loop this around itself and you go around it with another loop stick the tag end in between both loops you grab the second loop and pull it through the first loop and that gives you a perfection loop you want to lubricate the knot stick your finger right in the loop and cinch it tight and you know you have a perfect perfection loop when this tag end comes out a straight 90 degrees. If it doesn't come out straight 90 degrees, it's not gonna hold, you need to cut it off and retie it. That straight 90 degree knot lets you know that you tied a perfect perfection loop. Cut that tag end off. Now you can connect this to your welded loop on the end of your fly line and have a easily removable leader. So my wingspan is about six feet and then half of my wingspan is three feet. So when I go with a wingspan of 30, half a wingspan of 25, that gives me a nine foot leader. I connect those two sections using a blood knot. All right, so here I got my 30 pound, here I got my 25 pound. I'm gonna create an X, put my thumb right where it connects, go one, two, three turns, and right through here. Now I'm gonna put my thumb to hold that down. Then I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five turns on the 25 pound and go across the opposite direction. You see both ends are opposite of each other. I'm gonna lubricate that with a little bit of saliva and then slowly pull it tight. And you're gonna have a perfectly seated blood knot. Typically they'll say you wanna get 10 turns on the blood knot. That's honestly too much for fly fishing. I've noticed when I started fly fishing, I used less loops for a stronger knot because if you try to stack 10 loops on something like a 30 pound, you're gonna get a lot more friction and you're gonna weaken the leader at the knot rather than get a nice secure knot. So if I'm tapering down from 30 pound to 25 pound, I'm gonna do three turns on the 30 pound side and I'm gonna do five turns on the 25 pound side. Make sure you lubricate that knot and cinch it down tight. And when I'm peacock bass fishing or tarpon fishing around town, I just go ahead and tie my fly onto that. I use the old Rapala knot. I actually learned how to tie this knot on the pack of a Rapala X-Rap many, many years ago. So if I'm gonna go for something a little bit more sophisticated like a redfish or a bonefish, I'm gonna use a little bit longer leader. 
and I'll go with an arm's length of 16 pound fluorocarbon tippet material. You know, I'm fishing for them in crystal clear shallow water and you want that leader to really disappear for them to pounce on that fly aggressively. By the time you have that leader, you end up with about a 10 and a half foot leader, which is plenty. I see guys throwing 12 foot or 14 foot leaders and then they're struggling to cast. The taper is just too long and the fly is just landing flat, especially if you're throwing a heavy fly. There are some scenarios where I'll just use 20 pound for bonefish and redfish, but it's not often. If I'm in Louisiana, I'm throwing 20 pound, maybe even 25 pound tippet because the redfish are larger and quite frankly, they're not as smart as the Florida redfish. fishing for big tarpon, I'm gonna go with a 60 pound butt section. I'll drop down to a 40 pound mid section, a 16 pound shock tippet, and then jump back up to a 40 pound bite tippet. There's also something else called a homeboy leader. The homeboy leader is what it sounds like. It's just nine feet of one solid line. Homeboy leaders are frowned upon because some guys will just tie in a straight piece of 60, straight piece of 40. You're not really making it sporty at that point. You're not giving the fish an opportunity to break you off. You're just gonna hook them and yank them on in. So I'm about to go on a trip to Louisiana and I have to get a lot of stuff ready. So I'm tying up leaders, I'm tying up a bunch of flies, and I'm gonna show you guys all this process leading up to the big trip. Let me know if there's anything you want me to show you while I'm in Louisiana. We're gonna try to catch redfish, black drums, maybe some sheep's heads, whatever's out there and willing to play. That is the plan. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Thanks, let's roll.